I still want some climber's gear, and sometimes I can get into shrines, so let's drop down to the Yesuridahi shrine and see if we can get into this one. Unfortunately, I was not successful at getting into the Tana Al Shrine. The side quest of rescuing Nidra is one of my favorite things in the whole game. I just love the dragons. They're so majestic and so cool in every single way. Uh, I just love this quest. And uh, uh, unfortunately, this is going to be the only time I ever see a dragon in the entire game because... If it's never morning and never night, then uh, none of the other dragons will ever respawn. So, nice to see you, Nadra. And I did, in fact, throw in the scale and try to get into this shrine, but I uh, couldn't get into this one either. Now, you may remember at the beginning of Episode 6, I defeated this stone talus and collected these luminous ore deposits, and yet there have been no blood moons, and the stone talus is still gone, but... These luminous ore deposits have returned, so it looks like there must be some kind of maybe finite amount of memory that the game uses for keeping track of uh, which types of things have been collected, and uh, the memory for these and the memory for enemies must just be separate. So anyway, right now I'm on the hunt for this guy right here. Uh, I'm actually after his weapon. There's something I want to know in this game. Do weapons respawn if enemies don't die? So, uh, now that I've got my uh, Shock uh, Great Thunder Blade, I want to come here. Normally I kill this guy with an ice weapon, but I don't want to kill him permanently. I want to just take his weapon and uh, return to this spot again some other time later in the game and see if I can get his weapon again. This time through the Korok Forest, I actually learned something. I didn't want to give up one of my weapons to pick up a torch. And I discovered that you don't actually need the torch. You can actually just look at these little wisps floating around in the air. So watch these wisps closely, and you'll notice that every time we come to the point where uh, I need to change direction, the wisps actually change direction as well. Now, I prepared for the desert, getting all kinds of heat and cold-resistant armor and potions and whatnot, and it turns out, because it's 5.15 a.m. all the time, none of that matters. It's never hot and it's never cold. It's just always lovely. Now, normally, you talk to this guy once and you get the snow boots, and you come back later and talk to him again, you get the sand boots, and you come back later and talk to him again, you get both. But because it's always 5.15 a.m., that doesn't work. Uh, the third time you try to talk to this guy, he's actually asleep and you can't get both. So think carefully whether you want snow boots or sand boots and then just never talk to him again after you have what you want. And for no apparent reason, my favorite way to enter Gerudo Town is right here. Through the back entrance, directly into the chamber with Riju. But, as you can see, some kind of game instability caused a glitch, and she's not here. And guess what? I'm pressing every button, the game is frozen. Fortunately, after reloading, it didn't persist, so everything was fine, everything was back to normal. Nothing special happened in the Yiga Clan hideout. I got my pictures for the doofus in Gerudo Town. Talked to the doofus in Gerudo Town, gave up my snow boots, got my sand boots, talked to him again, and I can't, I wish I got my snow boots back. 
the only unusual thing that happened in Von Naboris is the fact that I remembered how to get this chest without dropping it. And the fact that I beat Thunderblight Ganon on the first try, thanks to this Lionel Crusher that I got from the Great Plateau. Look, half of his health all in one attack. Never even saw the third phase. Go to the Shrine of Resurrection and return the Sheikah Slate to its terminal. Finally, I can do the one-hit obliterator quest. So I figured I would just use that waterfall right there as a nice little quick way to get up to the Great Plateau. So you notice that down here the water is warm and look what happens to my heart. Halfway up the waterfall where I can't support. Even though I'm wearing something hot to keep me warm, Anyway, this is where we're going to cut it off for this time, because next time we got a whole lot of shenanigans with the obliterator.